Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me. In this video, we're going to once again focus on wrist and forearm. So this is the second of, I believe, three um, videos that are gonna have that focus. And this particular sequence, um, my students love, but don't love, okay? So they, they love the um, results, but being in it is a little bit, um, has some unpleasantness. So you gotta find your threshold of what you can withstand, what you feel is the most effective. Okay, so we're gonna be exploring um, different positions on our hands, okay, um, turning them in different ways. We're gonna do one hand at a time. A lot of the time when I'm teaching, we do both simultaneously and I offer the option to do one at a time. But here I really want you to do one at a time and then do extended child's pose or down dog in between just so you can feel the effect Okay, of it all. So we're just gonna head on back, okay, onto the hands and knees. Feel free to put any kind of cushion underneath your knees to make it more comfortable. Okay, so the first thing is just noticing how it feels to have your hands in uh, more of a neutral position. So the middle fingers, so first of all, the um, fingers are all spread out. The palms are connecting with the mat. The middle fingers are parallel or the index fingers. For this, I'm um, reaching my middle fingers to point directly toward the front edge of the mat. And then just getting a sense of how much you can unground, okay, the head of the arm bone shoulder joint, and how much it can, you know, can it um, get into the shoulder joint, but maybe so much so that it's tensing the neck. And can you find that middle ground where the head of the arm bones feels snug, okay, or, um, they, they can float in the joint without it being either extreme. And then as you work across the hands, can you draw energy up, seamlessly up, beyond the wrists, elbows, shoulders, length in the neck, and just feel, okay, this, this position. So starting now, so I know we're doing both hands, they're both doing the same thing at the moment, we're going to be switching it up. So I'm gonna choose the hand that's closest to the camera here. The first thing we're gonna do is, um, let's do this, where we're gonna turn it. Okay, turning the hands. So now the thumbs are both going um, in the same direction. Okay, and it's a totally different kind of stretch. So for some people, okay, as you're trying to uh, send your fingers, because so you're pointing your fingers toward your knee, um, for some people their hand is not going to fully get flat, okay, on the mat. They're going to be kind of feeling stuck, okay. So again, you're going to find your right positioning that you can work with, okay? Is it possible to get the palms flat, um, flush with the mat, and not lose connection, head of the arm bone shoulder joint? It's a huge stretch for the underside of the arm. Are you still breathing? Right, so these are the questions I'm constantly asking while in class. And we would be here for some amount of time, some, I try to, you know, I can feel it, the energy of the class, okay, of the room and go, okay, how much longer can we be in this? How much longer can I get away with us being in this position before they want to kill me? <laughs> okay, so I might be meeting that point right now. Just one more breath, really try to find space in the shoulders, length in the spine. Just for someone who isn't receiving, you know, there's no challenge to this, you're able to straighten your arm, you could keep the palm flat and intentionally bend your elbow toward your knee and shift your torso forward. Okay, so there, there are arm balances that start to go in that position. Okay, let's go ahead, release the hand. Okay, and it might be throughout, like this one was getting tired, but this one's really tired. So you could always be on your knuckles, you know, you can change up the position, make it something that you can tolerate. The next thing that we're going to do, okay, same arm, is carefully flip. Flip the back of the hand. So maybe you had zero issues with the previous thing, but now you're like, what? How is she getting, you know? So a lot of the time I'll look around and arms are not straight. Um, the, the back of the hand can't get, cannot get onto the mat. Again, work with what you have, okay? And don't force it. You're, you're not going to be, I mean, do not force it. it. Most likely your body won't even let you. And if it did, we have a bigger problem, okay? Because you just cannot cannot force things. All right, so the back of the hand or some part of the back of the hand is on the ground. Again, we want to feel it that it's an open, unhindered channel at the wrist, elbow, okay, arm bone, shoulders, length in the spine, 
if you are able to get into this position, it doesn't feel like it's much of a challenge, keep the back of the hand on the mat, okay? And then just send your seat back so you're getting more of an angle. Okay, imagine downward facing dog. Okay, we won't be doing that, okay? But with your hand in this position and you're just working, okay, to find that right amount of stretch. So, you know, we encounter so many different bodies, life experiences um, in class as teachers, and we want everyone to be able to feel like they get an effective stretch from the tightest individual to the most flexible, okay? And um, those who have tighter muscles are going to feel things sooner, okay? And the more flexible muscle or jointed people are going to have to work differently to feel the same things, okay? And, and that really is just the difference in, you know, the types of instructions that you might hear in classes, okay? All right, so carefully release that, okay? If you can, sit back on your heels. Otherwise, just come into a position that just works for you where you can kind of just check in, maybe massage the wrist, a little massage to the forearm. We did this in an earlier video. Okay, the first one in this, this series of wrist and forearms. You're just trying to get it re to recover enough to be able to put some weight on it okay, and receive information. Okay, So now you choose whether you're going to come into um, extended child's pose, something that's active with the upper body, okay, where you can feel the difference in the arm you worked versus the arm you haven't yet okay, or not worked in the same way. Downward facing dog, maybe, okay? So coming into the position that you can um, breathe in and feel and have this awareness, okay? Just seeking length. You're seeking information. So you're scanning the body from the palms, okay? Each wrist, how do they feel different? So was it worth it, right? So I'm always trying to build positive evidence for the students. That might have been torture, right, what we just did. But isn't it worth it <laughs> when you come into this position? Okay, can you feel the positive result in the wrist, okay, the elbows, the shoulders? And more, that positive evidence is that it feels like a more open, receptive channel that you, and as you release this carefully, that you're going to get more out of your practice, more from your practice, okay, as you have this space, right? Okay, so we're going to do the other side. And I don't know that you have to do it in any particular order. I'm going to go ahead and turn this way just so you can see. Now, this one is probably tired, okay, the one we just did. So find a position that's not going to um, create tension, okay, on that side. And then align, okay. So I always like to go from um, when, when the joints aren't um, overly taxed, you know, so there's not a lot of weight in any joint in this position. Um, you know, you might want extra cushion underneath the knees. But anyway, um, I like to explore the extremes, okay, to build awareness. So here, I'm ungrounded. Here, well, yeah, I'm grounded, but with the potential for tension. So I want to engage and create a, a secure and comfortable environment, okay, for how the bones and joints connect, all right? So breathing, and then I'm going to turn this hand, Okay, and just focusing on seamless channels. I get over, I always, I mean, I'll turn everything, every single thing into a back bend um, to my own detriment. So I have to, I have to watch that. So I'm trying to keep the spine neutral, lengthened, breathing well. Um, your fingers might want to crinkle, try to, try to extend through the fingers, keep breathing. We're going to try to spend the same amount of time on this side. Um, keep lengthening. So I'm trying to root across my palm, the fingers, and yet create, as much as there is weight on the um, hand, I'm trying to not allow all my energy to descend. I'm really trying to pull it up, up, um, you know, that upward flow of energy and then in toward the midline. So all those same things, okay, over and over and over again. Okay, and then from the center line, extending out. Okay, so lengthen several more smooth, deep breaths. Again, if you're not feeling challenged by this, 
you can keep the palm flush with the mat and intentionally bend the elbow, shifting your sternum forward. Keep breathing, keep lengthening. Breathing through the nose as much as you can. How about two more smooth, deep breaths? Keep lengthening all around your neck. Good, one more smooth, deep breath. And it's a very, it's not a desperate exit. Okay, it's a careful, careful exit. Okay, and you can just massage the hand, the wrist, checking in, will your fingers move? <laughs> will your wrist move? Okay, and then this time, okay, bringing the back of the hand. Like I said, you could absolutely do this with both hands um, simultaneously. Okay, so you don't you don't have to do this every single time, one hand at a time. Especially if you're um, trying to, you know, squeeze in a yoga practice, you might not have the time to do one hand at a time. That being said, doing both at the same time might be too intense. Okay, so you just again you make the practice work for you. Okay, where you're really reaping the benefits, the rewards here. Smooth, deep breaths. Again, okay, so right, you want the um, clear channels, feeling grounded, lengthening, and then if you're just not feeling, you're not getting enough feedback, you can always shift your seat back and get more of an angle. Okay, just make sure that the channels stay open all around the shoulders and neck. That you're able to breathe well. A few more smooth, deep breaths. For anything that um, is a challenge, I'm always negotiating with myself. So it's not painful, okay? It's just effortful, okay? So when I'm dealing with that, and, and I'm really trying to work on my own um, discipline, stamina, um, the, the, the monkey mind, then I figure, okay, how long can I stay in it? How many breaths do I estimate I could stay? And then, okay, I'm gonna add one or two more breaths to that. That'll be my goal. And I just work in incremental um, phases. How about one more breath? This is me talking, trying to distract, okay? Trying to keep you in it as long as possible. And then carefully, carefully release. And again, just check in, okay? So checking in here, okay? Moving the fingers, moving at the wrists. It might feel like slowed down at first, okay? But then once you come into the position, so let's do it again, either extended child's pose, down dog, something, something effortful, okay, where you can feel the impact to what you just did, okay? Feeling length and space. And hopefully now, okay, both arms feeling equally open, the shoulders, okay, nice channels from the arms to the down the sides of the torso, okay? Feeling that length in the abs, the space all along the spine, the length across the neck. Maybe testing this out. How does um, plank feel? You might choose not to, that's okay. That's okay, we've done lots of work, okay? All these, just checking it. Okay, so finding positions where you're familiar with them and so you would be able to know you know the, the difference that what we've done you know what what has it made for you so I hope that this was helpful and that you receive a lot of um, benefit I'd love to hear from you have a wonderful day namaste